today I will be um, giving a short presentation about um, plagiarism and citation practices with specific reference to uh, policy at Trinity College Dublin. I should acknowledge that I'm building here on a presentation uh, given last year by uh, Peter Hamilton, uh, which unfortunately I didn't uh, uh, record at the time. First, what is uh, plagiarism? Uh, so plagiarism is a copying text, uh, keywords, phrases, sentences, or paragraphs uh, from someone else's uh, work uh, without acknowledgement or without correct citation practice uh, or borrowing ideas uh, without acknowledging the source. So I think it's important to distinguish that it has both of these dimensions, uh, stealing people's ideas and stealing people's words. Also, submitting someone else's work as your work is uh, plagiarism and is a particularly egregious uh, form of it, uh, whether you know they're a friend of yours uh, or um, you've hired them. So why does this matter? Well, uh, you shouldn't want to uh, behave unethically. Uh, it is stealing someone else's ideas or words. Uh, and uh, it can get you in big trouble, so it can matter for job applications or your future in academia, it can affect your grades. Uh, but also, uh, if you obscure the difference between your ideas and someone else's ideas, then you're not giving yourself credit for your own ideas. So I think a healthy sense of self-respect should make you want to uh, showcase uh, your original contribution and to do that, you need to uh, distinguish very sharply uh, what am I bringing to the table versus what am I relying on from previous people. It's um, important to do research, to build on uh, other people's work, to engage with other people's work, but you need to show how you've done that and distinguish your own contribution. And if you're ever unsure, you know, it, 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 is this fact so basic that it doesn't need citation? Uh, have I paraphrased this sufficiently that uh, it doesn't need to be in quotation marks? Uh, err on the side of being explicit. So cite rather than paraphrase and cite rather than assume that something is, is basic. In, in a sense, the worst thing that can happen if you cite too much is that you won't have a beautiful piece of writing. The worst thing that can happen if you cite not enough is that you will get in big trouble. So uh, pay attention to that incentive structure. So how do people end up plagiarizing? Well, uh, one thing is to rely on uh, tempting internet sites like Wikipedia or Baidu. By all means, use the, these sites, you know, like uh, informal sources, non-academic sources, are a place you can get information from in the same way you might read uh, you know, news sites. But have that inform your own knowledge in, in a very general way. Uh, don't ever copy text from uh, Wikipedia or Baidu. And if you're tempted to because you think something is important to include in your argument, find a, a more um, formal source. Uh, and here, uh, you know, maybe a new source is appropriate, but also Wikipedia increasingly cites all of its own sources. So you can follow those sources back to the original, just to, to round off my comments about internet sources. Uh, they're a good starting point to find, you know, find your footing, become oriented. But when you actually go to write, you should be relying on more authoritative sources. And in any case, regardless of what source you're relying on, if you use words taken from it, those need to be in quotation marks. Another common source of plagiarism is insufficient paraphrasing. This is where you don't want to quote something. Maybe it doesn't fit well in your paragraph. You, you want to paraphrase it. Um, it's fine to paraphrase. Um, but uh, if you find yourself mechanically replacing 
uh, words from a source in order to not be plagiarizing from it, I think something has already gone uh, badly wrong. And instead, you should say, you know, uh, if I find it natural to freely say something out of my own mind that I know I'm relying on a source for, well, then write your own words and put in a citation so that the reader knows uh, where you've gotten the information from, uh, but not where you've gotten the words from because the words are your own. That's, that's one path. The other is you find that it's useful to cite the words of a previous uh, author, in which case they should be in quotation marks. Insufficient paraphrasing is probably where most actual uh, students go wrong and get in trouble. So I would say, just don't put yourself in that situation. Uh, one way you could end up in that situation is by being disorganized. So if you take notes while you're reading, that's excellent. And I have another video on uh, how to take notes. Uh, you might uh, be interested in watching. Um, uh, but uh, so taking notes is great. Uh, but if in taking notes, you don't distinguish your own notes from phrases or sentences you've copied out of the book, then when you consult your notes later, you will have introduced an ambiguity that can lead you into trouble. So when you're taking notes, already be extremely disciplined about putting things in quotation marks that are actually sentences or even long uh, phrases taken from the sources you're reading. If you have clear notes that distinguish your observations about what you're reading from uh, passages you're actually taking from your reading, then uh, those clear notes will help you avoid accidental plagiarism. Now, another issue uh, that can be very common, you, you don't feel particularly uh, fluent in English, you know, that writing in English doesn't come naturally to you. So you are relying on certain uh, phraseology, uh, certain uh, ways of expression that you find in your reading. My heart goes out to everyone who struggles uh, with this problem, uh, but uh, you must exercise, uh, you know, uh, caution and discipline. And this is where, uh, erring on the side of putting quotation marks around something is a good idea. It's better to write poorly, to express yourself badly because you're writing in a foreign language, and to have to experience that struggle uh, than to take the shortcut of just using someone else's uh, uh, words, because uh, that will get you in trouble, and it's unethical, and and you're missing out on a useful learning experience by struggling to uh, write things in your own words. And then also uh, one can plagiarize because you're trying too hard uh, to look smart. So um, maybe you can't come up with a brilliant uh, argument, but you find one and you think, ah, oh, well, I will use that as my own. Well, don't do that, you know, rely on your own ideas, and it's better to write a bad essay than to plagiarize. And also don't um, cite things that you haven't read or citing a primary source where you've relied on an intermediate source. It's important to cite where you've gotten something from. And uh, if, you know, your, your cite, your you're referring to an idea of Marx's or Freud's or Darwin's, you know, maybe you haven't read the, the original source by Marx or Freud or Darwin. Uh, maybe you should read them, but also it's uh, fine, it's good practice to cite the particular work where you have been confronted with their idea. So in a sense, um, again, err on the side of allowing the reader to retrace the steps you've actually gone through in terms of both uh, proximate sources and uh, ultimate sources. So when should you cite something? Well, you need a citation after every quotation, uh, quotation in quotation marks, after your own paraphrasing of key uh, ideas, key concepts, key words uh, from others, and any information that is uh, non-obvious assertion of fact. 
So something like China's population today is almost 1.4 billion. This is common knowledge. You don't need to cite it. Uh, the Qing dynasty abdicated in uh, January 2012. It's common knowledge, e easy for anyone to confirm. Uh, you don't need to cite it. But if you claim that when the Qing dynasty abdicated, China's literacy rate was estimated to be between 15 and 20 percent of the population, this is something that most people don't know that you can't just find with a quick Google search. Um, so you need to say how you have come to know it uh, by uh, citing a book or article uh, where you found that information. And uh, just to take another example, as historian Ed Rhodes has analyzed amid the, uh, the Xinhai revolution, there was widespread violence against ethnic Manchus. Uh, even though you're not quoting uh, this historian, you need to add a citation so that someone can reproduce your experience of coming to know it. So uh, yeah, that's when you should cite. You should cite whenever you're quoting, you should cite whenever you're paraphrasing, and you should cite whenever you're mentioning a fact that isn't totally obvious. And if you're not sure whether a fact is totally obvious, then cite. The goals of, of citing your sources are to show your own work. So in a sense, to make your research reproducible uh, and uh, to make it easy for others to, to do that. So like I said at the beginning, distinguishing what's original of yours and what you've relied on and to make what you've relied on um, accessible to others. There are many different uh, styles of citation that are um, used in different disciplines, in different countries, in different language traditions. Uh, and uh, I won't make any recommendations here. Uh, your own experience of training, uh, both in the past and in the future, will make you comfortable with some. Uh, but what is important is to pick a method and to stick to it slavishly. Uh, you, you will cause yourself all sorts of headaches if you switch between one style and another, and uh, it also will get you marked down. So whatever you do, do it very consistently. Uh, and um, let's say one broad distinction among citation styles is whether they prefer footnotes or whether they prefer uh, in, in text citations using parentheses, uh, don't mix between those either. Choose one uh, and stick with it. So some examples, this is from uh, the MHRA style, a single authored book. I'll just talk you through this one. So you see you know, the kinds of considerations. So this is how something would be in a footnote in this style. We have the initials of the author's first name, the author's last name, a comma, the uh, citation in italics, then in parentheses, the city of publication, colon, the publisher, comma, the date, the closed parentheses, and then the page. And then this page number is the specific page that the information being footnoted or the quote being footnoted can be found on. And then uh, here's how a, a, a journal article uh, would look. I won't talk you through it in the same detail, uh, but the point is these conventions, where to put commas, where to put parentheses, what to italicize should be consistent throughout your essay. So some tips for uh, research and citations. Until you know a particular system well, have the description of the system open on your computer so you can check. You can say, oh, I am citing a, a, a book chapter in a multi-authored uh, book. That, this is how I should do it in this system. And if you're embarrassed to cite a source, if you say like, oh, you know, for example, Wikipedia, if you say, oh, this source doesn't look good in me citing it, then don't cite it and also don't rely on it for whatever you were tempted to rely on it for. So again, returning to what I said earlier, if you came to know a fact from Wikipedia, that's fine. That's a fact about your own biography. But if you want to cite a fact, find 
something uh, more authoritative, something you wouldn't be embarrassed by. A very important uh, recommendation, don't hold back from citing until the end. I was, I'm surprised this comes up. In, in my own practice, I take notes, I keep track of where I've gotten things from in taking notes, and then I sort of put those notes together, uh, rearrange them, write transitions between them, and the citations are sort of carried along the whole time. But uh, some students uh, seem to read, take notes, then make an outline, then fill in the outline, and then add citations for all the claims. This is uh, risky. I think it's very risky because you, you will have created opportunities to accidentally plagiarize by um, having separated your claims from the sources for a long time and then trying to reunite them. So I think that's bad practice. Uh, don't add citations at the end. Instead, you know, what I would recommend is this fussing over what should be in italics, what should be com where it should commas be, that you can say uh, to check partly at the end. It's, it's good to do as you go um, uh, because it saves you work at the end, but to the extent that it distracts you from being creative while you're writing, uh, maybe you don't sweat it, but never let yourself lose track of where you've gotten something from. All right, and then how to uh, interact with a foreign language. Well, when giving a citation, it's good practice both to uh, give the uh, original language and uh, to provide a translation. Although there are some differences between different disciplines, I would say uh, it's always better to give more information than less. So when you're quoting a source in your essay, also give the original in, uh, for example, Chinese, give the Chinese original, and then provide a translation uh, of the quotation, but then also in the citation, things like the, the title of the article, give the original in Chinese, and give uh, a translation. I would also like to just uh, share with you some resources that we have uh, at Trinity. This is a site from uh, the Trinity College Dublin Library, Avoiding Plagiarism. It has uh, a, a detailed discussion of uh, what plagiarism is, uh, provides you with a tutorial that you can take, uh, various resources and information that uh, I suggest you become familiar with. And then I would point you in particular to uh, the here, the levels of consequences. Uh, there's a discussion of the rules around uh, disciplinary action that can be taken um, if a student uh, commits plagiarism. Um, but what I find, uh, let's say, is useful potentially for a student is on the right, there are um, characteristics of the offense listed, um, which will give you a sense of different things that constitute plagiarism. So, uh, for example, poor use of referencing uh, conventions, um, poor paraphrasing, uh, lack of recognition between the, of, of the boundary between uh, material in the public domain, which does not require acknowledgement and that which does. So it is a nice explicit list of, of different things that could go wrong. And um, let's say if you are familiar with all of those possibilities and secure that you are uh, not at risk of uh, falling uh, into them, then uh, you're in a good position. So hopefully uh, you will know uh, both you know, in general terms, uh, what is plagiarism, how to uh, cite correctly, but also uh, have resources specific to Trinity. So thank you very much.